So who here likes science? Any hands? Awesome. Yeah, yes, oh my gosh, okay. When people, when people tell me they love science, I always get really excited because I absolutely love science, um, especially the life sciences. And I'm, at my school, I'm very involved in STEM, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. And so last year, I decided to challenge myself, to kind of step out of the comfort zone of the life sciences, and I signed up to take advanced placement physics at my school, AP Physics. And I'm not gonna lie, that was a really tough class. Um, but there were a couple of girlfriends in the class and together we worked together. And all I had to do was just take the exam in May. And I remember walking into the test kind of all nervous and shaky, kind of like I am now. Um, <laughs> and I walk into the room and I'm doing that little awkward scan where I'm trying to find someone, who can I talk to? And I remember, oh my gosh, I'm the only girl in here right now. And I tried to kind of insert myself into a couple of the guys' conversation, but it's like high school, it's awkward. I'm kind of on the outside. And so I just sat at my own desk and just kind of waiting to take the test. Another girl came in a little bit late and I never got the chance to talk to her. But that experience really got me thinking about all the other times when I'm trying to explore STEM and I'm kind of feeling left on the outside. Even just looking at my girlfriends, closest girlfriends, they're all interested in history, business, and teaching. And there's nothing wrong with that, but it's just such a clear difference from my closest guy friends, who all know they want to go into biotechnology, engineering, and computer science. And so thinking about all of that, I started doing a little research about women in STEM. And I found that for I was not alone, it was not just me, it was not just my school, and it wasn't just my age group. This is a problem that extends into the STEM workforce as well. Um, for every seven STEM workers, only one of them is female in the United States. So that's one woman and one woman and six six men. And so that kind of creates that sort of environment that I was in at my physics exam where the women might feel awkward and a little bit isolated. And so going along with that, one, one in three women that are already working in STEM plan to leave their STEM job by next year. And so I'm a senior in college, and I also wanted to take it a step further and see if college programs are also working to solve this problem. And it turns out that because a lot of colleges practice affirmative action and try to keep their gender balance pretty even, that about half of the STEM degrees earned in the United States are earned by women. And I was like, oh, this is awesome. So women are progressing in STEM. But then I thought back to that the one in seven statistics. So half the women are getting their degrees, but less than half of those women are actually working in STEM. And so we're not following through. They're getting educated, but they're not staying or actually have a chance to work in a chemistry lab or in a um, biology research facility like they were hoping. How, how can we solve this problem? Well, Microsoft is very interested, and they were doing some research, and they found that um, at young girls, um, at around 11, their interest in the humanities and STEM plummets. When they get into high school, humanities recover. Then many women start to gain their interest back in humanities. STEM never really does. And so we, I want, I'm thinking that we need to catch these young girls before that interest plummets and engage them in STEM and show them that this is, this is a possibility. You, you, you can go into STEM. And so I was like, okay, well, what can I do about this? What can you, a person, a part of society, what can you do to help us solve this problem? Well, the first step is to eliminate any bias that you might have. And I, when I talk to people about this, they're like, oh, oh my gosh, Lydia, no, I don't have any bias. Of course, women in STEM, yes, let's go. But sometimes those little things just slip out. Um, I remember I came home one time a little bit upset because I had done poorly on a physics test. And my mother, she was very, she was doing the mother thing. She was telling me everyone was, everything was gonna be okay. You make mistakes, you can recover from it. And with the best intentions, she smiles at me and says, you know what, it's okay if you don't understand it. Physics is a boy subject. So 
getting kind of getting rid of that thinking is very important. Subjects don't have genders, and just because women not as many women go into STEM doesn't mean that they don't have the ability and smarts to do so. And if you're a parent, if you have children, you can take that step further. You can engage your, your own children, encourage them to excel in science and math so that they don't grow up resenting it for the rest of their lives, as some of us do hate math. <laughs> and um, you could you could show them shows with STEM role models, um, like, uh, Project MC Squared, even Cyber Chase. And when your children mature, maybe you can show them Bones, an uh, excellent TV show. Star Trek, that has women in STEM. Um, Jurassic Park, <laughs> Ellie Sadler, she's awesome. She's a great archaeologist. I love, I, I always look up to her. <laughs> and e even Hermione Granger from the Harry Potter series, I always look up to her very much because she might not need science, she has a magic wand, but... <laughs> She, I always admired her work ethic and how she always wanted to challenge herself and excel and go above and beyond. And so I always wanted to be like her when I was growing up. Another thing that parents can do is to um, introduce, introduce the STEM to their kids. Because when I was young, much younger, adults would always ask me, so what do you want to do? And off the top of my, I don't know, seven-year-old head, I was like, okay, it's teacher, doctor, nurse, actress, right? That's pretty much it. <laughs> I, and okay, this is kind of embarrassing, but up until eighth grade, I had no idea what engineers did. Um, I knew they built stuff, um, but I never really learned. No one ever sat me down and was like, here, you know what's a cool career opportunity? Engineering. And so that's the difference. Um, I, I'm going into high school just starting to discover this profession, but all my guy friends have been dreaming about being an engineer since first grade. And if you're not a parent, uh, you could, you could be a role model for other kids. Um, for example, I have a fantastic uh, teacher. Um, she taught me calculus and physics, Miss Miller. She um, was a mechanical engineer prior to teaching, and she's so knowledgeable, and um, she, she always explains everything so well, and I honestly admire her. And out of the 16 years that I've been living on this planet, she's the first and only mechanical engineer I've ever met female mechanical engineer. And if you don't have kids, I'm not a parent, I mean, I'm a, <laughs> no. Um, <laughs> you could still be, you, you could be a role model and even take it a step further, like I did. Um, one day, after doing all this research and being like, oh my gosh, I gathered up a couple of my friends and we decided that we want to go around our, and to local communities and um, giving presentations to young kids about STEM careers or any interesting STEM topic. Um, and we don't have to just go to elementary schools or middle schools. We like to go to, we want to go to places like libraries or tutoring spots or boys and girls club, anywhere where we could reach young kids before that interest in STEM dives down. And so we found the key is being very hands-on because we want to engage kids. We want them to be excited about STEM. And so, uh, for example, my favorite one presentation we do is astronomy. And we made these constellation goggles where when you put them on, you can see the Big Dipper or Connie's Major. And we have this little activity where we have the kids pre pretend to be the solar system and line up and arrange themselves. And we really have a good time. Um, and a lot of the times, I, I love um, engaging with kids um, and getting them interested, but a lot of times I kind of doubt myself, like, am I really, am I really making a long-term change? Am I really inspiring anybody? But at the end of all our presentations, we always ask kids to write down one thing that they learned that was the most interesting to them. And after the astronomy one, a fourth grader girl wrote, I learned that I want to work for NASA when I grow up. <laughs> that was, that felt, I felt like I was actually being a part of the change and that was great. And though she's young and she might change her career aspirations, it was really nice to know that all I could ever ask for was just planting the idea in her head. And when we make these presentations, we, we never, it's not like we tell all the boys to leave and we're like, okay, let's talk about women in STEM. Um, 
our, part of our goal is about equality. So all genders, all races, all ethnicities, identities, everyone is welcome. But we just make sure that we don't forget about the girls. Thank you. Yeah.